very it's always important to be the one who makes the decision whether or not you get hurt. You know, if some guy can just throttle you and you don't know how to defend yourself, you're in a terrible situation. You don't know how to defend yourself. You know, you 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 could run into some nut and some nut decides to beat you up. I mean, I've seen it happen before where guys just get they're crying and they're begging to the, and the guys kicking them when they're down. Have you ever seen a situation like that? Oh, it's yeah. Horrible to watch to watch a guy have his, his manhood taken away by someone just because he doesn't know how to defend himself. You know, and it's most of the time you're never going to run into that situation. Most of the time, if you hang out in good circles, you're going to live your life and not have to worry about it. But you might, you know, you might. <laughs> I don't know, man. You zagged, you I grew up in Dallas. Store. I don't know if it's still like that up there, but there are a lot of really bad people that like to get in fights. There's a lot of people all over the country that are angry, man. There's people that have terrible jobs and terrible relationships and terrible upbringings, and they want to kick your ass. They don't care. They want to kick your ass, you know, and you got to be aware of those. No, I was like a nice little kid when I was like 10, 11, 12, and kids would. Like kids were like five, six years older would beat me up. Yeah. And, and, and that ended up making me a little bit stronger. But it would have been great if somebody would have put me in something like jujitsu way back yeah. then. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have learned how to just have knockdown drag outs with people. Well, you could still enjoy it now. You know, it's a great. You're, how old are you now? 30, 35. 35. Look, you still got time, man. You, could, you can train. You could learn. You can get good at it. And so it's a fun thing to do for exercise. Because, you know, getting to the gym, just getting on the elliptical machine and lifting weights, it can get pretty tedious. No, it does, yeah. But jiu-jitsu is, like, always fun to do. You know, you're playing a game, and the game, it's, like, literally, like, my friend Eddie, who teaches me, describes it as, like, a, like a video game. Eddie Bravo. Yeah, Eddie Bravo, who's probably one of the most innovative, not the most innovative jiu-jitsu instructor ever. He's Because he, he smokes pot. He smokes pot and comes up with all these crazy moves. And he, he describes it as, like, you're playing a video game, and the video game is that you're trying to kill somebody. I mean, it really is like that. It's like you're, it's a real live game, and the game is trying to checkmate somebody. Amazing. In closing, uh, Joe. In closing. JoeRogan.net. Uh, you, you recently been shooting a movie. Uh, yeah, I shot a movie uh, called The Zookeeper uh, with Kevin James. It was a fun movie. It's like a kid's movie. I play a uh, real douchebag. It's uh, fun. I play his enemy. You play the bad guy? Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was a real, real asshole. <laughs> it was fun to play. It was fun. You know, it was, it was an interesting thing. I haven't done a movie, and I haven't done a movie in a long time, and never a real one like this one. All the movies, I've, I've done two movies, and they were both crap. And, you know, doing um, TV shows. Like, you got to remember to turn my uh, phone off on air. That's the New World Order calling you. Hold on one second. We're tired of you. Hello? Dogs. You're talking on the radio, and then you're answering the phone. You know, I'm sorry. I'm on air right now. Let me call you back as soon as I'm off. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, who's that? was that? Press TV in Tehran, uh, one of me. Oh, office. that's hilarious. The Iranians are gone. You. They must love you. You're all anti-U.S. government. See, we told you. <laughs> we have the information. We have the documents. <laughs> they must love you over there, right? What do you I, think? What is? I do Russian TV, British, Japanese, everything. What's going to happen with us in Iran and Pakistan? The word is they're planning to hit Iran in two years unless they do what they're told by the globalists. They're not building nukes. The Russians have built it. It's, 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 it's non-weapon. The U.S. gave Pakistan nukes to menace India and Pakistan really? uh, and, and, and China. Uh, so it, it's all a global geopolitical chess game that it's the school of Zbigniew Brzezinski. He's kind of the Eddie Bravo of geopolitics. <laughs> and uh, so what, what is going on with North Korea? It's like a chess game with like 50 levels, and they're all just... North Korea was given the nukes by Rumsfeld as the head of ABB in 1996 so they could destabilize that and have a reason to attack them. And, of course, the dictators are always like, yes, give me. But it's like in the old Western, a Bill Hicks line. Right. Where the guy throws Is that movie, the, the, the movie that he talked about. It's in a bunch of movies. Sheen? Where, is that it? I, I don't know, but I've seen it like in other movies. Uh, you see it in that one, Clint Eastwood, which is based on true story. Jack Palance, right? Does the, the, the pick up character. the gun, kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where they throw the gun down to yeah. get him to pick it up. Yeah. But there's also that Clint Eastwood movie where he goes to the mining town and they kill the guy's dad, and then they throw the gun down in front of the kid and say, "Pick oh, it up." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's actually happened in some real Western stories. Is why you see it in so many movies. Right. But that's it. They're just giving him a gun. Right. <sighs> Crazy. Tell me about Cap City Comedy Club. It's a fun place. I filmed my very first DVD there back in uh, 1999, the one that you uh, you uh, and me wore the George Bush mask and danced around the Capitol. Remember that? People are oh, so great. silly, though. They think that's footage of a secret <laughs> satanic ritual. We had feather boas on. I had a feather boa. No, we're, we're out there yeah. at the Capitol. We're running around acting like we're the devil and Bush, and then they think we're serious. <laughs> hey, finishing up, how crazy is it that there's all these websites that really believe I'm Bill Hicks? That's an amazing. And they're doing voice analysis and everything else? Uh, well, you know, that just goes to show you people will believe almost anything. 
You know, it's there's a lot of dopes out there. That's why, you know, they don't want people organ like we were talking about Waco earlier. The reason why they don't want that is not just that they don't want to, people to be able to protect themselves from the government. There's probably a little bit of that. But there's also they don't want warlords. They don't want people to do like what, what's going on in Afghanistan, to be able to start their own cults and arm everybody and control these groups of people. Because it's not hard to control people. We have a, a defect in our operating system. And you can exploit that defect with confidence and with, with you know, a, a clear, you know, a, a a clear doctrine of what's supposed to go down and what's supposed to happen. And you could say that you're getting this information from aliens or higher power or what Joseph Smith said. You know, he got it from golden tablets that had the lost work of Jesus on it. It's not hard to do. And you could you could start your own group. Well, that's because we're very over. similar to dogs. That's why dogs live with us yes. is they follow the yes. alpha. Yeah, exactly. And, and they follow confidence mm -hmm. and leadership. And but but again, the biggest cult is the globalist. And they happen to be a eugenics death cult. So what I'm saying is, I'd rather have a few Jim Joneses or people yeah, running around. I don't know about that? Then the then the then the, well, also he was tied into CIA. But the point is, there's got to be a middle ground. There's got to be you know, let people have their guns to defend themselves. That's what's so good about Ron Paul. He is yes. not a cult leader. Yes. He is a doctor. He's a mainline yeah. guy. And we need to follow him instead of the cult of Republicans and Democrats. I agree 100%. And when he talks about these vaccinations, he says it's absolutely ridiculous. And he talks about how the regular flu is so much more deadly and killed so many more people per year you know, than this swine flu. And everybody's jumping all over this. And this, they're making a big deal out of it. Well, And, and again, it's common sense that this is killing about one-fifth in the flu season, what the regular flu does. How much money do they make? from? They've made $7 billion. A, a week ago, the Boston Globe reported that in the last week and a half... Five drug makers had made $7 billion extra in a week and a half. God damn. All from vaccinations. $7 billion extra. That is f incredible. That's incredible. And d does this get reported in mainstream news? Does anybody look at it as a possible angle? A lot of people are pointing it out, and it is starting to come out in, in mass media. Folks, I'll be back live tomorrow, uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. That's 12 noon to 4 p.m. Eastern and back Sunday. 4 to 6 p.m. He'll be at the Cap City Comedy Club tonight. Friday night closer to victory, ladies and gentlemen. You're doing three shows, right? Tonight, uh, one show tonight, two tomorrow, and two Saturday. So that's five shows you can get if you're in Central Texas or anywhere around. And then you can go to JoeRogan.net and find yes. out other places you're going to be yes. playing. And you can follow me on Twitter, Joe Rogan, D-O-T-N-E-T, -E JoeRogan.net, all spelled out. That's me on Twitter. On Twitter. Um, I'm on Twitter. Joe, I want to... I want to really thank you for coming I in. I want to thank you for having me. I appreciate it, brother. Buddy, we're going to go along with you. We're, we're going to go eat some red meat. Hell yeah. Which soon is going to have a carbon tax on it. Oh, uh, really? Your yeah. meat's going to have a carbon tax on it? Paid right to Al Gore, the little bastard. Damn bastard. Damn Al Gore. Al Gore has made a lot of money off of this global warming. That's one thing that people don't realize. Al Gore only had a couple million bucks in 2001. And now he recently made some $35 million investment, which just shows how much money he's accumulated. Over and, it, and, and, and that investment was given Obama money. So, so I mean, uh, look, the guy's worth over a billion bucks. He owns Occidental Petroleum. He hides his wealth. He's the carbon company credit. It's called Blood and Gore. Not joking. His partner's called Blood. That's incredible. Uh, over in England. Uh, Joe? They call him the, the first green billionaire. Yep. That's what they're calling him. He's a scam artist. He's the guy that sold us NAFTA and GATT. It's amazing. He says he invented the frickin' internet. I don't think he actually said that. He said he was a part of the whole process. He's a congenital liar. Is that like herpes? It sounds congenital. It means just he, he, he was born a liar. Oh, really? He was born to be born with herpes. Damn. Yes. Let's talk about coming out of the gate with a terrible hand. Al Gore is a big evil Nelly. He is a big evil Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the inconvenient truth, right? Uh, all right, buddy. Thank you, my friend. Joe Rogan, great job, crew. Closer to victory. Hey, follow the Republic, Joe. Here, you got your copies. We have the documents. Documentation. Camp FEMA. You are not documents. My woman's uterus. Documents. We're out of here. Right here. Right here, ladies and gentlemen. All the information you need. Oh, little balloons at the end. Don't ever use that graphic again. <laughs> My God, you're in trouble. <laughs>